So we are now on page 645, caution about putting up security, 644 in the purple books, 645 in the orange books. I believe last week we talked about warning against adultery was the last section that we looked at. Um, and our last notes, the Lord sees all our steps. Our sin will overtake us if we allow it, and death will be our reward. The heading is caution about putting up security. This is a good one. <laughs> okay, whenever you're ready, Deaconess Dallas. Good morning, everybody. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Proverbs chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor or entered into an agreement with a stranger, you have been trapped by the words of your lips and snarled by the words of your mouth. Do this then, my son, and free yourself, for you have put yourself in your neighbor's power. Go, humble yourself, and plead with your neighbor. Don't give sleep to your eyes or slumber to your eyelids. Escape like a gazelle from a hunter, like a bird from a fowler's trap. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. So, first question I ask, and I always ask, in what context are we reading Proverbs? A father's advice to his son. Okay. Solomon. Remember, we're in the life of Solomon. We haven't left Solomon yet. But Solomon is credited for writing 1,005 Proverbs, okay? And we are reading chapter by chapter and verse by verse the Proverbs of Solomon. He's writing these to his sons as advice and guidance for life. And we've read continually, my son, my son, my sons, plural, very wise advice. And we've seen how life is falling right into all of this. The key word, somebody tell me if you, can, if, you, if you are on the same wavelength with me. What's the key word, two key words out of everything that, uh, well done. Wisdom and understanding, okay? You have to have both. You can't have wisdom and no understanding because you're useless and you come off as a know-it-all. And you can't have understanding if you don't have wisdom because what are you understanding? And the main thing is it's God's wisdom, not our own. We know in this world, right now, we're, we're leaning to our own understanding in so many things and so many ways. And it's turning out to be abomination on all levels. But here, remember, Solomon asked God for his wisdom, and now he is imparting it to his sons. So when we look at his advice here, he says, My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor or entered into an agreement with a stranger, you have been trapped by the words of your lips. Does anybody want to give their thought on what that particular verse is talking about? If you have put up security for your neighbor, security, anybody wanna? I think financial security. Aha. Uh -huh. It's collateral. It's talking about collateral. Financial, yes, but it could be anything. If, if somebody asks you to back them in a loan, woo! <laughs> it says your neighbor or entered an agreement with a stranger. That me could be a friend, could be a stranger. Put up something for collateral for them. If you've done that, Proverbs is saying you're trapped. Okay, so why are you trapped? How are you trapped? 
Uh oh. <laughs> Come on, Deaconess. <laughs> right. Um, because usually it's nothing less than a five year commitment. And if that person reneges, you're on the hook for it, whether you like it or not. So I don't think I've ever done it, to tell you the truth. No, I haven't. Oh, yeah. Nope, haven't done it. <laughs> That's right. You're on the hook. And, and it's a neighbor or a stranger, so you don't know what their financial habits are. You don't know anything, but they're, oh, but, you know, you're my friend. Yep. You, if, you're, if you're my friend, yes. you'll do this. Yes. You, you know what I wrote there next to it? Family members. You need money, go to your family. <laughs> don't come to me. All right? I want to keep you as my friend. That's why I'm not going to do it. And even amongst family, we know what happens. All right? Um, yeah, they, they want to go for a loan from the bank. The one that makes me smile is they're going to court, and they want you to put up something for them when they go to court. Uh, no. <laughs> All right? But the world says, well, you're not a friend if you don't do this. Well, the scripture says, don't do it. So I'm going to abide by the scripture, by the words of God's wisdom. Here, he's saying that if you've already done this, try and get out of it. That's pretty much what this is all saying. You're under their power. You have uh, strapped yourself to their good or bad habits. You put your house up for them and they, they renege as Deaconess said, your house is gone. Really? No. If you're in it, get out of it. All right, Deaconess? I thought just came. it's funny how people that owe you in this situation, you have to ask them, like, when you didn't pay me, when you didn't pay, you have to chase people for your money. Not chase, but you know what I mean. You have to, they know you, they owe you. But you're asking them, look, when you going Listen. Pay, pay me back. When you going Listen, I'm not built for that. Okay. I could get into insurance in a big way right now about that. Okay. But, um, yes. Um, let me just add. It's the same way when you would go back to courts. I can honestly say I've had a child. Well, I didn't have three daughters in it. So one of my children had a fine. And I would not bail them out. They, I was not the one. They would have stayed there till it was paid. Nope. And I refused to pay it. And they learned a valuable lesson. Pay your fines. Because mother will not bail you out. And when it goes to houses and stuff, it's even like I tell people with rents. It's a very, it's actually nice to earn a home that doesn't probably have apartments because you end up in the same boat, right? Because you chase, chase, chase. Nobody done credit, I got a mortgage to pay, right? So that's where you really have to trust the Lord because if I could tell you the amount of tenants I've had that left um, funds owing, but we still paid our mortgage. So that's a testimony. And that was even before I came back in church. So that's a testimony probably to Mother Russell because um, we had to pay it. And some of them have left Bermuda. Some of them still live in Bermuda. And they will never get that money. Mm -hmm. Never. And you probably see them every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you see how, again, the world has gone opposite of the Lord. Okay, We're saying no. The world's saying, well, if you want to prove to be a friend, do it. No. And you really, and it's not just about money. You really have to examine when someone comes to you with a need. Where does, it, where, where does your responsibility start? I'm just a friend. You have family. You need to go deal with your family. Don't come to me. I have my own family I have to deal with. There's nothing wrong with taking that approach. Okay? They may not like it, but hey, I'm standing on the road. I'm taking care of my own. You have to examine it. Really, and go to the Lord in prayer about it, because he knows. He knows what they're doing in their household. He knows what their budget is like. You may not know, but he does. Okay? Yes, Reverend Danny? I think, I think that requires a lot of balance because 
Jesus also teaches us in the scriptures that if a neighbor comes to you, even in the middle of the night, that we're supposed to open our doors up unto them. He, Jesus even says, you know, you don't, you don't know who I am amongst you, and we, can't, we should be careful how we close, you know, how we decide not to help people. I think it's very a fine line. It is a fine line, but if you open your door and you're hungry and you need something, yes, I'm going to feed you. Okay? I'm not going to put up my house for somebody I don't know or, or no, no, I'm not no, going to do I, that. I agree with, I agree with yeah. that, but I, I think we, ha we can't be so, it's a careful line that we, have to, that we have to observe. We can't just be like, cut every, we not helping anybody. That's, that's not what Jesus has called us to do either. No, but, and, that, and I'm, I'm agreeing with you 100%. Remember, I just said, you have to pray about this. You have to seek the Lord about this. But I'm sorry, I'm not just going to put my house up for anybody. I'm not going to do it. But hey, it's Christmas time. I always have enough food for an extra plate if somebody shows up at my house. Okay? Yeah, there's ways that we can give. But I'm not going to just uh, put up financial collateral for just anybody. I'm not going to do it. Okay? And I've had situations like that. And I've prayed about it. And first thing, you need to go back to you. Look, what if we at Shekinah Worship Center, mm -hmm. you know where I'm going with this, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? You can't do for everybody. People think the church is a bank. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Right. Okay, so even here, we have to be careful in how we minister to any church. Is the church going to put up this property for, for just anybody? No. Okay. This is called being wise in how you handle your finances. And it's specifically talking about collateral. It's not saying don't help, but you have to be careful, very careful, especially when it comes to putting up collateral. That's what this is specifically referring to. Chief, you had a comment? Yeah, my comment was um, you can get you can have friends, but then you can have friends, meaning that because you're, you speak to people or you're friendly with people, they think you're, they're your friend. So that's why many times they come and they want to, you know, borrow money or want you to do this for them and do that for them. But you would know your friend, your friend, friend would know hey, should I? And then some people look at people as money people by virtue of profession or virtue of how they um, carry themselves. Oh, they got money. Or, and then some people also, because you have a house, they feel that you have money. They don't realize that the house comes with, with you paying. <laughs> So if I'm paying, and then you want me to pay for you, doesn't work that way. Doesn't. I'm sorry. Yeah. More time when you have a house, you don't have money. <laughs> the house has the money. And more times than not, it's not even your house yet. <laughs> okay? So, yeah, it, it raises a lot of issues here, and that's why we must be careful and mindful. Yeah? And you, and you look at those rich people in the Bible, they didn't just throw their money at just anything either. Abraham and Lazarus and you think of, you know, those that were rich. They got rich because they sought the Lord and the Lord guided them in how they were to deal with their money, their finances. Okay? Yes, Deaconess. And I, I was going to add, when you started talking about ministry, it's not just, or I know we're talking specifically specifically about collateral, but also of your time and your talent. Because I remember even when we ministered in dance and people was pull, trying to get us here left, right, and center, we had to really sit down and discuss, are we going to be a part of this? Are we not? And also when I speak of time, I remember in the beginning of KFC, um, the children, some of the children that were unchurched children coming, they hadn't seen their parents since 7.30 that morning. 
So they had been to school, and then they came from school to youth night, and we're feeding them, and we know they were coming just to get a meal. And there was one year where we invited the parents, and the children would come and say, oh, my mama said, can you give us three plates? And the parents weren't, the parents, that's sending the children to come. So the, it's, it's all about, it's a fine line because you want to minister to the children so that they bring the parents, but at the same time, you're taking advantage of it. So what are you really, you know what I mean? So it's also taking advantage of your time and your talent and your, your tithe also. And it is a fine line because we are, I'm talking about youth night, we are ministering to the children. We are ministering to the neighborhoods. But then the parents are like, oh, well, they can pick them up. They can drop them off. I don't have to get home. I could go happy hour because there were times where the parents couldn't be found. Uh, just drop them off to aunt so-and-so. You know what I mean? So it's, it's in all aspects of ministry, and it is a fine line, and discernment, praying about it, and seeing it for what it really is. Word out of there, yes. yes. Yes, there is discernment. There has to be. Or you'll wind up running yourselves ragged, um, and people aren't, they're, com they're not coming to the doors. They're not coming to the knowledge of the Lord, and that's not what we're here for. We're not here to be slaves and servants to make your life easier. No, that's not what we're about, okay? And that's why we have to take a firm stance. Yes. So thank you for bringing that up because we are talking specifically about collateral here. But it goes into all those areas. And the main thing is prayer, discernment, wisdom, okay? You're not a free-for-all. We are not a free-for-all. Jesus wasn't a free-for-all, okay? Jesus came to do a specific ministry. He wasn't coming to be used. People wanted to use him, but whenever they wanted to use him, you know what he did? He disappeared. Did you notice that? They wanted to take him and make him king, and he disappeared. You're not going to abuse me. We are not here to be abused. I'm talking our church, and I'm talking individuals. That's why we've got to know the heart of God and move as he tells us, not as the world tells us. Oh, you're the church, you're supposed to. No, 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 no. I'm listening to the Lord, and he lets me know what to do and what not to do. Okay? So don't get caught in that trap. Great discussion, and it's needed, and hopefully it's helped some of you to be able to stand more firmly. Okay, let's write here, because this will address this particular portion. Today being the 8th of January, 2023, and we're starting a new paragraph here, which says, a stern warning not to put oneself into financial bondage for a neighbor. A stern warning not to put oneself into financial bondage for a neighbor. Put a dash, as you are now subject to his action. Full stop. If you have done so, humble yourself and plead to be released. Yes, out of Roger. Sometimes you cannot be released. Because if you're backing somebody for a mortgage, for example, and they qualify because you backed them, you're in there until the duration of that mortgage. Bank eggs is not going to release you. <laughs> uh, no, understood that. Uh, and remember, we're reading the book of Proverbs, right? That's why we should know the word of God when we're young, before we get into these situations. Okay? This would help us not to get into certain situations. Once you're in it, you're in it. <laughs> okay? And most times the press is going to say, no. <laughs> you signed on a dotted line. That's it. But hence why we need to teach our children God's word before they get of an age so that they will know how to handle their money, so that they will know how to conduct themselves. Okay? That's the whole point. And as you can see, less and less children are learning God's word, and that's why things are going haywire. This is generational. Okay? Yes. For example, 
Andre, well, not Andre. We're friends. We're, well, we are. But I'm just saying, we're like best friends. And I see a house and that I would like to get. And she backs me like a co-signer. So she's responsible. So if I fail, not, if I fail to make payment, then they go after her. Oh, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's what it's all about. You know how like the, the courts ask for sureties for people for bail? That means if they got on a plane and head out of here, they're coming after you. You sign to say, I accept whatever financial burden comes if that person defaults, however it is. That's what it's saying there is um, in verse 3, you have put yourself in your neighbor's power. You've made yourself subject to how they behave. And when you say no, they'll probably call you the worst person in the world. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But this is where we are as God's people. We have to make sure we are handling. Because you lose your health. What happens to your family? That's the first priority is your own family. Okay? You politely say, why don't you go and ask your family to help you out? And your friends today, what happens tomorrow is a whole nother story. <laughs> okay. So we're good, right? Can we move on now? <laughs> this is only Proverbs chapter 6, people. <laughs> okay. So now we have the next section, warning against laziness. <laughs> Deaconess Dallas, if you please. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. Go to the end, you slacker. Observe his ways and become wise. Without leader, administrator, or ruler, it prepares its provisions in summer. It gathers its food during the harvest. How long will you stay in bed, you slacker? Ben... <laughs> When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms to rest, and your poverty will come like a rubber. You need, your need, like a bandit. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you can put that up there with the theme of Shekinah. Listen. <laughs> the motto, I mean. Yes. Look, who's had an ant problem this year in our house? Shh. Unbelievable. One little, teeny little grain of food. Right? They will find it. And it's not just one. Okay? They miss no opportunity. <laughs> I found the food. Let's go. And they all come without leader, administrator, or ruler. They got no boss. Nobody telling them, it's time to get up. No mama coming. Look, get out of bed. You got to go to work. None of that. Okay. They are diligent and they gather their food they prepare provisions in the summer and gather during harvest. They plan ahead. They store food. It's not just about for today. It's for tomorrow. They have plans. Okay? I have a cat. I have to feed him. While I'm feeding him, I'm feeding the ants. Okay? So I found God is good. I found a placemat to put under his, where his food is, and it has a ridge on it. And what I do is, his food goes in the placemat, and I take water, and I pour it on the placemat. And the water forms a barrier. The ants can't get to the food anymore. The problem is, when he eats, he shakes his head, and he flings food <laughs> on the floor. 
So the ants are coming to the bow. They're coming to the little specks of food that he's flung around. They miss no opportunity to gather. Here's Solomon telling his son, don't be lazy. Look at the ant. And especially sons today, I'm sorry to say. Okay, sons, I'm not picking on the man. Solomon's talking to his sons. So we're addressing the male, who is the covering, who God created first and took the female out of him. So he should cover the female while God covers him or while he is subject to God. Let's put it in the right order. So if he is subject to God, he should be working to provide for his family. Not just for today, there should be a plan in mind. When these girls want to marry these fellas, it used to be the guy had to go and get permission from the daddy. And the father would say, what's your plan? I want to know who your people, what, what, what's your plan for a house? You got a job? All those questions. Now the children are going to the parents and say, oh, we're getting married. Not one question asked. And usually it doesn't end well in many cases. There's no plan. They have children like it's a surprise. That's what happens when you come together. Or even if you plan, do you have a plan? Do you know how much it costs for a dentist? The copay? I tell young people that they're getting married, make sure you set up a savings account and start now for college and the dentist. Because at the drop of a hat, your copay for a child for the dentist is like a college payment. Okay? So these things, he's saying, take an example from the ant. That thing that you pick up and you rub together in your fingers and you throw away. He works harder than you do. Of course, now we bring the female into it because this, this is the world that we live in now. We should be taking as much advantage while we're young, while we have the energy to plan for the future. And don't wait, okay? Because you never know what's going to happen. And if you, you know, it's, and it's saying a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms to rest, and your poverty will come like a robber, your need like a bandit. Okay? That's not saying don't rest, because we know God has given us. He yeah. talks about a day of rest. We are supposed to rest. But this is talking about being lazy. Whole nother setup. Okay? And when I think about these men who are going around fathering all these children, this girl, this girl, this girl, I don't, I don't know why in her mind she thinks that out of the nine women that have had children for him, he's going to be 100% for this one. No. It's like fractions. In fractions, the larger the number at the bottom, the smaller the slice. And that's what's happening with these males. The more children they're having, the less they can give to any of them. And of course, these girls think the baby is cute. Well, what about when they're 16, 17, you want them to go to college, and he's got nine other children. So that's what this is addressing, is laziness. Okay? And the ants are showing up a lot of males, not just in Bermuda, but globally. The ant, the insignificant ant. All right? So let's write about this, because it's real quick. I'm trying to get in as much as we can. I think that goes without saying. I don't know if there needs to be a whole lot of discussion on that. It's very, very true. So, new paragraph here. The lesson to learn from the ant. The lesson to learn from the ant. It's funny, when it was about money, we all had stuff to say. When it comes to laziness, nobody has anything to say. But that's true. It, and that, that's what, where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is, right? So it's not a criticism. That, that is the way it is. Money sparks a lot of conversation, especially in church, okay? But it's good. We need to know this. So the lesson to learn from the ant, put a dash, who needs no one to tell it what to do. Notice it's not saying, don't tell me what to do. The ant knows what to do. 
you leave a speck of food down and psh, they got it from here. Oh my goodness. The lesson to learn from the ant who needs no one to tell it what to do. Full stop. It prepares for hard times while times are good. Full stop. Poverty and need will come quickly upon the lazy. All right, next section. Things God hates. I highlighted that word, hates. Because I was challenged by somebody on Facebook, this was a while ago, who said, God doesn't hate anything. Oh, really? Because, of course, she's been sucked into this God of Santa Claus um, thing. Oh, he loves everybody. He loves everything. No, he hates. Okay? He's holding back his wrath right now, but it will come out. Okay? And so... Things God hates. Deaconess Dallas? Proverbs 6, 12 to 19. A worthless person, a wicked man who goes around speaking dishonestly, who winks his eyes, signals with his feet, and gestures with his fingers, who plots evil with perversity in his heart. He stirs up trouble constantly. Therefore, calamity will strike him suddenly. He will be shattered instantly beyond recovery. Six things the Lord hates. In fact, seven are detestable to him. Arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes, feet eager to run to evil, a lying witness who gives false testimony, and one who stirs up trouble among brothers. Mm, wow. Again, looking at this, and I'm jumping down to the six, the seven things detestable to the Lord, is the stuff of our entertainment these days. Yes. Constant entertainment. Arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, hearts that plot wicked schemes, feet eager to run to evil. A lying witness who gives false testimony and one who stirs up trouble among brothers. That's our entertainment. That's also in the news every single day. All these things are what God hates. Okay? The lying, the murdering, the um, stirring up of trouble. Okay? But... Remember, it's not so much the people that God hates, it's the things. It says six things the Lord hates. Remember we talked about crino, judge. That word means condemn. We do not condemn people for these things that they do. These things have already been condemned. These sins have already been condemned. When people choose to engage in them, they are embracing that condemnation. That's what we preach about. That's what we proclaim about. We're not condemning anybody. We can't. Only God can do that. So when they say, oh, the Bible says don't judge. No, no, no. The Bible says don't condemn. I'm not condemning you. I'm letting you know that the sin that you're engaging in has been condemned. And if you continue in it, you will be condemned with it. That's what we need to go back with. Because the minute people come at you and say, don't judge, people, Christians shut up because they don't know what to say. That's what we tell them. And right here, points it right out. Arrogant eyes, lying tongue. In fact, you know what? Let's write it down because it's right here in our notes. New paragraph here. A sneaky person who is crafty and stirs up trouble will be struck with sudden calamity and shattered. New line here. There are seven things that the Lord hates and are detestable to him. That's pretty strong language, but we've made them entertainment now. And then we're going to go down the list, one to seven. 
arrogant eyes. So we're not holier than thou. It's all about humility. Number two, a lying tongue. That's why we must speak the truth. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Oh my, my. Immediately I go to abortion, child abuse, and even neglecting to introduce our children to God's word. We leave them open to the enemy. Father Trot, you got a comment? Wait for the microphone. Don't say that all will come under murder. Um, I don't know. I haven't looked that up to see that. So I, I can't say, I'm sure it's included, but that would be a good one to check. I haven't, I haven't looked that up. So I'm going to put an asterisk beside that to have a look and see what that actually means. Number four, a heart that plots wicked schemes. A heart that plots wicked schemes. And there's a few meanings here, so I would have to have a look and see what that, um, what that is actually referring to, Father Trot. Number five, feet eager to run to evil. Feet eager to run to evil. Think about all the, um, I don't know why it comes to me, sucker punches, robberies. Just out of nowhere, like, uh. but you, you see where the world has gotten with all of this, okay? Number six, a lying witness who gives false testimony. A lying witness who gives false testimony. And number seven, one who stirs up trouble among brothers. One who stirs up trouble among brothers. Hmm. So when I look that up, it says a brother used in the widest sense of literal relationship or metaphorical affinity or resemblance. So I go right to stirs up trouble in church. Not just your family, not just your physical family, your spiritual family. Okay? The Lord hates that. So all these things are what the Lord hates. So we need to, and we're going to stop right there, but we need to um, self-examine. It starts with us. Okay, going right back to that first one. Be careful who you are backing with your collateral. Laziness. And then the things that God hates. We need to self-examine ourselves. First, the, this stuff gets right into the nitty gritty. Um, and then the thought and contemplation that I have here, that we have here. Have you ever reflected on what wisdom really is? Wisdom, said a great man, is more than knowledge. Knowledge is just knowing things. But wisdom is the ability to put knowledge to its best effect. Ask God once again to help you wise up and the scripture, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace-loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits without favoritism and hypocrisy. James three seventeen. That's a tall order, but it can be done by the grace of God. So that's what we want. We want the wisdom of God, not the world's wisdom, because if you look at it, the world's wisdom are the seven things that God hates. That's why when the world goes one way, we go the other. And it's going to cause us to be ridiculed and all of that. And Deaconess Tyra, I know you can account for it. The ridicule that we get, yeah, yeah, big time. But... 
as, as um, I'm not going to get into it in detail, but if you stand firm on the word of God, and just like it was, I think it was Gideon, I thought it was Joshua, I can't remember which one, you will stand and watch your enemies fight against themselves. <laughs> right? On your behalf. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. It, the battle is the Lord's, and you will see it. This weekend, I saw it on Facebook for myself. Okay? <laughs> it, it, I, I'm telling you it, you, it does not feel nice going through it. Don't worry about that. Stay focused on God, your purpose, and watch God make your enemies turn on themselves and destroy themselves. It, it happens. Whew, it happens. <laughs> Okay, let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Solomon, Lord. We thank you for your word that has given us more nuggets of wisdom, oh God, and is helping us to self-examine. That's what this is about, to help us to see ourselves, where we stand with you, so that, Lord, we can grasp hold of your word, your wisdom, seek your wisdom above our own. Seek Jesus as our Savior and go out and share this wisdom with those who need to hear it. Those in our closest circles, those who will hear our voice, Lord. Thank you for this guidebook. Thank you for this manual. Thank you for your, your heart within these words. That our hearts can take on your heart and our words, your words. And the effect that it will have on those that hear it. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for your love that you have not left us without anything to get through this life. And we pray for those that will hear these words, that hearts will be softened and that they will take hold of what you have for them through this word. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you that you are our Savior and that we look to you one day to return and come back for your bride and that we will be with you and our Heavenly Father forever. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank you.